It's your boy Warren B. Arthur of Pimp God, which your mama should have told you. Here with a new audio book. The Ideology of Selfishness. The Ideology of Selfishness. <clears throat> now, you know, typically when we speak of ideology, you know, we're talking about a collection of ideas relating to or uh, leading to an overall thesis uh, or um, theosophy, which is the basis of theology. Okay, the basis of theology is theosophy. <clears throat> Typically, when we think about um, selfishness, we look at it in a negative light. But selfishness can be likened to a car being refueled, a private jet being refueled. It has its utility, it has its purpose, but it still has to gas up. It has to be made ready to be useful. Without gas, it doesn't work. It doesn't go anywhere. <clears throat> In order for a man to lead properly, he has to put himself first. Thus, the ideology of selfishness is dealing not from the vanity standpoint of most women. You could be selfish without being vain. The more that a man matures and grows, the more he's going to say no. And so some people would say that he's selfish. The more developed you become and the more mature that you become as a man and the more successful you become in life, people are going to give you opportunities to spend your money. <clears throat> to borrow your money if you are a mature man you're, you're going to learn to say no a lot and yeses are going to be things that you become stingy with you become stingy with your yeses because if you say yes you're putting your, your signature on what you're committing to that's what's called a man in this word. So a man should be stingy with his yeses because, <clears throat> and that's, he doesn't want to sign a check that his ass can't cash. So although there's some negative aspects to selfishness, um. In terms of building, in terms of self-preservation, there's a measure of selfishness that lenders have to have. In order to put themselves in position to lend, the Bible says the borrower is servant to the lender. But there was a measure of discipline and a lot of no. That that person had to say and stick to in order to get in the position to say yes every now and then. And, and even when they say yes, if you're a lender, it's only based upon whether or not you deem them not only worthy of the loan, but able to pay it back, more important. It's the golden rule. He who has the gold rules. But it's going to take some selfishness to get that gold. If a man puts a woman before himself and he falls in love with, 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 with that ass and the way she makes him feel when she has, how do you know she ain't bipolar? How do you know in six months she's going to feel differently about you? Women's whole entire commitment is based upon usually the way that they feel 
And when that changes, then so does their commitment. They want to have these big productions in a church or here and there, these public productions. <clears throat> but how long does a marriage last? Because the real nitty gritty, right, is when the rubber meet the road. I remember when I first bought um, my range, you know, um, I bought it used, you know what I'm saying? But it was mint. But it, the tires, the tires was like, <coughs> definitely, you could ride on them <coughs> for a while. But the dude told me, he said, don't hop in this truck and go out of town, my dog. He said, go get you some tires first. So that let me know that he knew what the fuck he was selling me. Oh, you, you, you got that much confidence in this vehicle, even though it's used that I could even drive out of town in this motherfucker. That's the first thing he said. Don't go out of town in this motherfucker. That's what he said. Go get you some tires. And that's what I did. I took my first trip. I took my family from Cleveland to Virginia. And naturally, you did. I dropped off at my birthplace, my birthmark, which is D.C. <clears throat> but um, but the gist of it is that selfishness is necessary. It's a necessary component, and a man has to become acquainted with it. A man has to guard his manhood selfishly. He can't give bits and pieces to her in exchange for sex. And there are times when a woman challenges a man to see if he'll give up his manhood in exchange for that. <coughs> I've had times when I've lived with a woman and the woman held my, my shelter over my head. My very shelter. In other words, she will put me out unless I acquiesce. And I told her, no. In fact, I said, fuck you. No. My words, exactly. <laughs> True story. And I made her acquiesce instead. Which only pissed her off because she was keeping, you know, she had a sheet on, on, on wins and losses. That bitch was pissed. She was ready to burn that motherfucker. <laughs> Because I'm a selfish man. Self-preservation. And in this day and age, the black man's manhood is a target. His manhood is a target. And everybody's taking a shot at it. So you got to be selfish with your manhood. And that's why I'm doing this audio book. The theology of selfishness. Let me put it to you in this in these terms. As long as you kiss a woman's ass, she's going to continue to shit on your face I mean your face is right there as long as you continue to kiss a woman's ass she's going to continue to shit on your face in this gynocentric society we have been conned as men to put too much emphasis on that ass you know why? Let me tell you why. Because a lot of women aren't bringing much more to the table. <laughs> so they have to uh, overemphasize the true value of what they're bringing. And this is why it's important that even mothers participate in the 
the subjugation of the proper expression of a man's manhood, the development of that manhood. As well as an all out personal involvement. And I'm talking about the women in our lives. Okay. And making sure that we're castrated as men. It's a true story. One second. So. You got to stay on your, your P's and Q's. You got to stay on top of your game. Because. There's a lot of haters out here. 